handshake contests with Donald Trump might seem easy for Emmanuel Macron if you put that in comparison to his first foray as president into the symbiotic world of France's ties with its former North African dependencies. Macron making what's billed as a two-day private visit to Morocco's king with the solemn vow that he'll go soon to see the leaders of neighboring rivals Algeria, managing France's overlapping interests between those two bitter rivals, just uh, one of the pitfalls. There's also the domestic aspirations of the Moroccans themselves. Macron's visit coincides with growing social unrest in the impoverished northern Rif region. The answer to a movement triggered by the killing of a fishmonger who was trying to save his stall from a scrap heap has been a crackdown deemed heavy-handed by activists and intellectual. Now, the Arab Spring largely bypassed Morocco, but these social demands are still there. So is an Islamist opposition that is allowed to hold office but kept under close watch. The king, Mohammed VI, uh, he has a lot on his shoulders. He's a key partner between the West, Africa, and the rest of the Arab world particularly these days when it comes to the fight against terror and uh, be playing the middleman in the uh, squabble between Qatar and its neighbors. What future will the Sharifian kingdom write for itself in the context both domestic and, uh, and international? Today in the France 24 debate, we're looking at Macron's visit to Morocco. With us uh, from the capital, Rachid Tutu, who teaches sociology and economics at Rabat University. Thank you for being with us. Thank you so much. I'm pleased to be with you. From Casablanca, Khalid Badu, he's the president of the Moroccan Association for Marketing and Communication. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for hosting me tonight. From Washington, Moroccan blogger and activist Zineb Bemkaden. Welcome back to the show. And here in the studio, Jeff Porter, the founder of North Africa Risk Consulting. Nice to be here. Thank you for being with us. The uh, France 24 debate on Facebook and Twitter, the hashtag F24 debate. Um, Emmanuel Macron invited to uh, break the iftar, the Ramadan <clears throat> fast with the king on the menu, cooperation on counterterror, the mediation between the Saudis and Qatar, business ties, and much more. Anka Ula has more. During his presidential campaign, Emmanuel Macron visited Algeria and Tunisia, but ran out of time for Morocco. To make up for the lapse, he vowed to visit promptly after his election, a promise he's delivering on now. On Wednesday, Macron and his wife Brigitte are invited to dine with King Mohammed VI in Rabat for the breaking of the Ramadan fast. The Elysee is calling the trip a personal visit, meaning Macron won't be accompanied by diplomatic or business delegations. His advisors say it's an opportunity for the two leaders to get to know each other better. Morocco is one of France's key partners in the fight against extremism, and France is one of Morocco's top foreign investors. But the French president choosing Rabat for his first visit to North Africa is sensitive. His predecessors, Jacques Chirac, Nicolas Sarkozy and François Hollande, all picked Algeria as the first Maghreb destination. Both former French colonies, Algeria and Morocco, remain France's strong allies. The two countries are also long-standing regional rivals, with deep divisions over their shared border and western Sahara region. To preserve the peace, Macron assured that he would visit Algeria in the coming weeks. He also sent Foreign Minister Jean-Yves Le Drian to Algier this week to reaffirm the partnership between the two countries. Macron's visit to Rabat will set the tone for his administration's relations with the Kingdom of Morocco, following diplomatic tensions under his predecessor, François Hollande. Uh, let me begin with you, Khalid Badou. What do you see as top of the uh, agenda uh, when the king and the French president sit down for dinner? I think uh, the objective of this visit, or if you would like to put this this visit under a slogan, it's, it's we can call it breaking the ice, because it's the first time that officially both the king of and President Macron will meet. Uh, they will get to know each other. Uh, they, uh, they need to build uh, a relationship of uh, head to state, uh, one to each other. So this is, I think, the first objective. And this is why this visit is put under the friendship uh, slogan. Uh, again, there are many issues that, are, that uh, need to be debated, issues of common interest. We are talking about security. We are talking about uh, economic growth in Africa. We are talking about the relationships between Morocco and France. Because, as you should know, uh, France was the historical economic 
partner to Morocco. It has been for the, the first economic partner, either in terms of investments or exportations. But now uh, France is losing this position. It's now becoming second in terms of investments after uh, United Arab Emirates. And it's becoming also second exporter to Morocco after Spain, which, uh, which, is, which should not please to President Macron. And I'm sure that this will be part of the discussions. One of the other challenges that would be around the, the table is also the crisis in, uh, in the Gulf between Qatar and uh, the rest of uh, GCC, or most of the GCC countries. Uh, Qatar is an uh, important partner for Morocco and for France, and we know the important investment that Qatar has been making in, uh, in France and in Morocco. And it's not uh, on the interest of either party have uh, a long-lasting uh, issue or crisis between Saudi Arabia, UAE, and Bahrain from one side and Qatar from the other side. So okay, these are yeah. some of the uh, issues that will be brought to the table. And uh, in addition to that, most importantly, as I said, the two men need to get to know each other. Their families will need to go uh, to know, know better each other. And this is at least a five years lasting relationship that needs to be built today. Yeah, uh, the, the, this issue, let's talk about this issue of Qatar, because it really is the, the pressing issue right now. The Moroccans <clears throat> offering food aid right. to the Qataris and also uh, uh, suggesting they play mediator. Uh, we're seeing the French and the British who are taking a different stance from that of Donald Trump when it comes to Qatar. What kind of a role will Morocco play? Because there seems to be already be a mediator with Kuwait uh, playing that role. Correct. Um, you know, as Khaled mentioned, um, you know, there, there are opportunities for Morocco to play a bigger role in mediating what they see as a, a, as a regional dispute. I mean, don't forget that Morocco is an honorary member of the GCC. Uh, Morocco has strong relationships with Saudi Arabia. Um, they Very go, strong relationships. Right. Yeah. They go back to, <clears throat> excuse me, they go back to Hassan II or Hassan II's time, where there was a strong military alliance between the Saudi Arabia and Morocco. That alliance continued with Moroccan support for Saudi Arabia's military engagement with Yemen. So there is that strong tie there. In addition, there are the strong links that Morocco has with Qatar. Um, so it, it's possible that Morocco will be able to exert some influence over both parties to the, the, the dispute in the Gulf. In addition, I think there's another closer to, dynamic closer to home, which is that you know, Morocco wants to demonstrate that it can be an international player. Morocco doesn't just want to be a partner to France. Morocco doesn't just want to be a partner to the United States or to Europe. Morocco wants to show that it has the capacity to serve as this bridge between sub-Saharan Africa and Europe and also serve as a moderator on an international scale. Yeah, the economic cloud of <clears throat> Morocco has grown. Do you agree with Kelly that uh, France's influence is waning? Um, I, I don't think we can draw a direct line between France's economic position in Morocco and France's influence in Morocco. Um, I think what dictates the relationship between Paris and Rabat is, as Khaled pointed out at the very top of his comments, is primarily a security relationship at this point. Uh, we know that Morocco provides a tremendous amount of intelligence assistance and sharing to the French security services. Given what the events of 2015 and 2016, the, the risks posed by terrorism here in France, um, the steady pace of security operations undertaken by the Moroccan police against the Islamic State supporters within Morocco, that security and intelligence sharing component to the relationship between Paris and Rabat is 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 invaluable and is absolutely critical as Macron moves into his yeah, presidency. Yeah, there was that that tip off uh, by the Moroccan intelligence services when there were the Brussels attacks, uh, most notably. Correct. Uh, that that's one example. In addition, there are more operational things. Uh, Morocco and France cooperate on law enforcement training. Um, there's a, a significant level of Il cooperation between the United States and Morocco. So you know, I think that is going to be at the forefront of any formal discussions that Macron has with uh, King Mohammed VI. Yeah, uh, France, which, by the way, uh, has uh, strong intelligence ties as well with Algeria. Uh, one French historian quipping that uh, Macron made a rookie mistake in an otherwise flawless French presidential campaign when he waded into the argument over France's role back when Morocco was a protectorate and Algeria a <coughs> colony. Remarks that were made in Algiers back in February. Colonization is a part of French history. It's a crime. It's a crime against humanity, and it's genuinely barbaric. It is a part of a past which we must confront, also by apologizing to those against whom we have committed these acts. 
Uh, Rashid Tutu, when you uh, think back yeah. to those remarks by, by Emmanuel Macron, the candidate, what did you think of him back then and what do you think of him now? I, I, I think let me uh, first uh, uh, say that the, the visit of Macron will be uh, uh, a visit at a time where uh, there are uh, uh, upheavals in the, in the reef uh, uh, in the north of Morocco. So uh, June the 11th, just uh, uh, about 150,000 people uh, rally in Rabat in support of the uh, reef protest. So I think uh, 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 it's uh, a very uh, strategic uh, visit to the uh, Kingdom of Morocco, but uh, uh, Macron uh, uh, has, uh, I think, to bring again to the table that uh, uh, there are uh, uh, thousands of people are uh, uh, expressing their anger and unsatisfaction to the failure of development projects in the north of Morocco and across uh, 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 all over uh, Morocco. Uh, as my colleague said, uh, the uh, Macron uh, visit and all French uh, presidents' visit has always been strategic and important for Morocco as our first uh, important economic and political uh, uh, partner. But uh, 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 the influence of France on internal affairs is also historical. So we can remember from the 70s uh, uh, the leftists who were exiled in France and how they were supported by the French uh, leftists. So I think it's uh, time now again to open debate for civil society and social movements to, uh, 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 to be part of this strategic relationship. And not only the president or the king should monopolize this strategic uh, partnership. Uh, but Khalid Badu, what, do, what did you think of Macron when you heard his remarks on uh, colonization being a crime against humanity back in February? Uh, comments he was forced to quickly roll back uh, because of uh, uh, outcry here among voters. I think Algeria keeps on being very sensitive on uh, what's related to the colonization period. And as you have well mentioned, uh, uh, Morocco was a protectorate and uh, Algeria was a colonization. So uh, Algerians and Algerian uh, governments keeps in mind most of the time that there, there needs to be an official uh, excuse from the French authorities on what happened in the uh, 19th and 20th century. So Morocco what do you think is, on that uh, point, Khalid? What do you think on that point? The fact that Macron is first in Morocco as president before going to Algeria. Uh, this, is, this is actually a habit that has been implemented since uh, since uh, Mitterrand. I mean, the first visit uh, on one uh, one of the first visits outside the European Union is uh, is to Morocco. It has been broken, I think, once uh, during Sarkozy's because of some pressure from the uh, from the Algerian government, but. The fact that uh, what Macron is doing today is just coming back to normal. It's just coming back to a period in which we show, France shows that the relationship with Morocco is strong, is historical. And I think this leads us to talk about the Sahara issue, because uh, at the heart of the conflict uh, or on the relationship between uh, Morocco and Algeria is the Sahara issue. Uh, the Moroccan Sahara is uh, under, uh, uh, under the United Nations pro process. And it's, uh, it's been solved through a political process. It, uh, fr Algeria keeps on trying to make of France uh, less uh, of an ally to Morocco, more of an ally to, to Algeria, either in the United Nations the Security Council and, and on or that, in the uh, different positions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and on that point, Khalid, uh, Morocco making its grand return to the African Union in two weeks' time. The, and, Indeed. Uh, for, Indeed. For years, That's Algeria, but also <clears throat> Muammar Gaddafi's Libya, kept Rabat out over its 1975 uh, annexation and occupation of, uh, uh, of Western Sahara. Uh, why do you it, think the sands have shifted actually, now? Actually, it's... it's bringing back Sahara to the Moroccan territory, to the mother uh, uh, territory, since it has been part of Morocco for, for ages. So it was not, not an occupation, actually. Uh, why, why do you think the, the, the winds have shifted? Uh, sorry, can you say the question again? Why do you think that uh, even though the AU still recognizes an independent Sahrawi government in exile, that Morocco is back in the fold at the African Union? It's not, it's not an, uh, an independent country. It's a, a territory under conflict, which is under a political process that's managed by the United Nations. And this is, how, this is why uh, the, the Polisario is not uh, a, a member of the United Nations. It's just, it has the status of an observatory member. And this is why also we keep on 
reminding our media partners to have the Moroccan uh, map uh, fully uh, shown in their uh, in their media. But anyway, this is not our subject today. I mean, just to go back to the discussion in Macron's visit, I think indeed the, the fact that Morocco is back to the uh, to the African Union will also reinforce its position. Morocco has also been accepted to re, to uh, to uh, integrate or to be a full member of the CEDAW region, of which Algeria is not a member, of which Tunisia so is not a member. So it's the, uh, the ECOWAS, indeed. Uh, so it's 15 or 16 countries with Morocco, which will constitute a very strong economic and political uh, uh, and political gathering of, of African countries. So uh, this is why today we are talking about uh, a country, a sovereign country, which is Morocco, which, is, which has economic interests, which is opening a strategy uh, towards Africa, a very promising strategy towards <clears throat> Africa. You know that today Morocco became the second largest investor uh, in African countries, which was the, which, uh, right after uh, France. Uh, you know also that in some countries, mm. the Côte d'Ivoire, the Ivory Coast, uh, Morocco became the first investor uh, after uh, the first investor in the country, and uh, it took the, the position of France that Art. has been historically there at first investor. So Mor today, Mor Morocco uh, with it was within itself. Macron, Just, I, want, yes. I, want to bring in, I want to bring in Jeff Porter on this before we go to the break. Uh, yeah. There's always that rivalry with Algeria that's Correct. sort of looming in the background whenever we talk about Morocco. Correct. Um, you know, regarding whether um, you know, President Macron made a, 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 a mistake um, or broke the mold or returned to the mold established by Mitterrand by going to Morocco before going to Algeria, I think, you know, we have to sort of zoom out a little bit and look at the broader picture. Um, in addition to maybe or alongside having gone to visit Rabat, it's important to recognize that the new director of French external security, the DGSE, is the French ambassador to Algeria. And Bernard the French Bajoulet. foreign minister was just there. For right. You. And so Bernard Bajoulet, you know, has extensive experience in Algeria and will be alongside Macron here in Paris. And so I think that you know, that sends a signal that the relationship between Paris and Algiers is as important. As it's always a balancing act. Right. As it, right. Exactly. I mean, and, and, and I think there tends to be a little bit too much made of this rivalry. Um, and I think, you know, sophisticated politicians and certainly, you know, Macron has demonstrated that he's learned from perhaps past blunders, but he's going to manage the relationship in the same way that previous French presidents And had. just in one word, Morocco being back in the fold at the African Union, what, te what does that tell you? It tells you that they have come to the end of a very long diplomatic road, and I think they're very happy about the progress that they've made, especially in sub-Saharan Africa. But it, none of it could have happened without the Arab Spring and the death of Gaddafi in Libya. All right, the Arab Spring, you mentioned it. Uh, Rashid Tutu mentioning how social unrest is still alive in North Africa and in Morocco itself. We'll talk about it when we come back. You're watching the France 24 debate. <laughs> 